compare our Bibles to things that are over 2,000 years old. And the Bible stands reliable, tested, 2,000 years worth. Compare what we have to the manuscripts 2,000 years ago. And then that's what I need to Please, please, you have a soul inside of you. We all will die. We all have these things in common. No one will escape death. No one. Don't risk your whole soul, your whole life on something that is wrong. Would you please, please think about these things. Even though you don't take anything from us and you're walking by, I want you to at least when you go to your hotel room before you go to sleep, as you walk down the streets, please okay. continue to think I'll see you in about, about your soul. Seconds. And when you die, where it goes. We want you to be saved. Jesus came to take, to forgive you of your sin. Jesus came to show us how to live. I was in the darkness. I lived for myself. I did a lot of stuff. I'd be ashamed to tell my children. But I have been given light, a new mind and a new heart. God has forgiven me. I have found how to live. He's given it to me right here. This is over. This is thousands of years old. Some of the manuscripts in here that we find, we can trace back and it's reliable. There is nothing like the Bible in all of ancient literature. And it has the power to change. It had the power to change me. It has the power to change you. I didn't care about life and death. I didn't care about other people. God gave me a new heart. God made me care about what is right and wrong. Right and wrong matters. How we got here matters. Where we're going to go matters. Don't let a perspective ruin your life. What is truth? We cannot have thousands of different truths all existing at the same time. Someone is right and many are wrong. One way is right and many ways are wrong. We want to believe, we want to say and be nice and say everybody is right. That's a I want to see you saved. 
I want to see you born again. I want to see you with a new heart, a new mind. God did that for me. He made me new. He made me, he changed me. He made me live in the right way. I pray that that can happen tonight for some of you. Please, we all will face death. Don't be afraid of what lies ahead. Don't gamble it. No, for sure. Look at Christ. Look at the Son of God who has come. And the Son of God has died. And the Son of God has risen from the grave. If anyone has power like that, I would follow them. No one. God is the most supreme wonderful, beautiful thing that you could ever conceive. He sent His Son to die for us. He saw my sin. He saw our sin. And yet Christ saw me at my worst. He saw me at my worst. Christ died for me when I was hating him, when I was against him. 
abide in your tabernacle? This is an important question. Who shall abide in the tabernacle of Jehovah, of God?
if something contradicts something else, then it is impossible for both, both views to be correct. It is impossible that everyone's perspective is attached. It is impossible for everyone's perspective to be attached to reality. I know we all have our differences in our opinions, but there is reality that's waiting for us when we breathe our last breath. No more discussions, no more debates, no more mocking, no more making fun, no more anger, no more sorrow. It's just I die, I step into reality. All of us will face that one day. No matter what we believe, our belief has to be attached to the truth so it can carry us into eternity. You don't want to live your life thinking something is true and it be wrong. And it and in eternity, we will find out, it will validate who was right and who was wrong the whole time. We cannot all have different perspectives and all be right. There is truth out there and truth can be known. Not many people dig deep enough to find that truth. Most people was like, was like me, superficial. Just, just, just thinking about God very flippantly, thinking about life and death and purpose very flippantly, coming up with my own conclusion and making a decision on very little, very little information. Please dig deep, press into God, press into God. If you seek God with all of your heart, you will find Him. He is not hiding from you. He is not hiding from me. Like I'm trying to make this huge announcement. Proverbs 8 says, wisdom is crying out. God is always crying out through his creation. This building didn't, these buildings didn't just happen. They didn't explode from nothing to an organized system. Creation itself speaks of order, a purpose, a function. Everything is balanced. The moon is always facing you. The same face of the moon as it goes across its path in the sky is always facing you. The timing is perfect. The revolution is perfect. The rotation is perfect. Every day that moon cries out, there is a God. The blue sky, the green plants, everything makes too much sense to be out of chaos and out of limbo. Blow it out. Blow it out. Blow it out. Still going or? Why did I ever stop? Try to play this a little bit if you want. Break me and then everything. I can try it everything. Can play this one. Life is so precious. Life is valuable. That value 
modified through evolution. Evolution means you are an accident. I am an accident. We're all, we have no purpose. They're random. You're material and matter. Someone's been praying for 
for you. Someone continues for you. Someone continues to pray for you. I'm just a reminder that God loves you very much. He wants you. Press into Him. He's pressing into you. He's trying to awaken you. I'm trying to awaken some of you and say, please consider, please think about these things. Life and death happens to all of us. How are we to live when all of us with our different perspectives carry that perspective into reality? Who's going to be right? Who's going to be wrong? Please consider, consider, consider what Christ has done for you. Please. I cannot force you. God cannot force anyone to believe. God cannot force people to come to Him. All we can do is remind, 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 and, and spark an awakening and say, please, think about these things as you walk by. Think about the most important historical figure in the history of the world, the man that changed the entire world more than anyone else. Our calendar is timed after his birth, 2,019 years ago, approximately, something happened. 
dead. I was like, alright, thanks.
get the full barefoot spot. That's pretty good, guys. Yeah. How you doing? But on the way, I remember to sit. I'm like, oh. I the contract. Oh, by the Queen of Walmart. Oh, let's see. <laughs>
And when Jesus came, people did not understand and they rejected him. And today it still continues on. I pray that today that we would stop. Don't ignore. Don't ignore what Jesus has done for me and for you. He gave his life. He led the most incredible life in the history of the world. No one man's life has changed the entire world like Jesus has changed the entire world. He was born in time without smartphones. He was born in a time where people had to write things on scrolls and that we find these things and the more we find, the more it verifies that he was that historical figure that the Bible talks about. We pray as you are walking by, we pray that as you hear the sound of my voice that you would remember that Jesus did die for you as he is what we choose to respond or ignore is I pray that we would consider what is beyond this life. We all, no matter how old we are, no matter our background, no matter our perspective, truth to us of the other side of the door. When we live our life, when we cross over the door, we go into that. Our perspective has to carry us over into eternity. There is safety in Jesus. There is safety because He was there. He died and He rose from the grave. I pray. Someone's been praying for you. Someone's been praying for you. Thank you. Someone's been praying for me. Somebody's been praying. Today might be the day. While you hear His voice, do not harden your heart. For today could be the day of salvation. Today could be the day everything changes. Today could be the day that your sins could be wiped away. Today you could find purpose and meaning. Today you could let go of anger. Today you could get let go of that that holds you back. We pray that the most important historical figure in all of history, that you would respond to him that you would dig and find out if this is true. There is nothing more important than what happens after you die. What is the meaning to life? Jesus has died and risen from the grave and he has proven his love for you and for me by sacrificing everything. We pray that as you walk by tonight, something inside of you will awaken to the things of God, that you would turn your whole heart, not some of it, not what is convenient, but your whole heart over to the God that loves you and gave everything. Your life has value, your life has purpose, and it can be found in the Son of God. Sins can be wiped away through Jesus alone. That's his claim. He claimed to be the sin. He came to be the bearer of sin for the whole world. To take it upon himself and to take care of you. To take care of me. That we could be washed and made clean. And that we could be an inheritor of the kingdom. Open up your heart. Don't close your heart to God. Stay while you can. out for God. Seek Him with all of your heart. Please. God loves you. The question is, how much do we love God? With half a heart or with all of our hearts? Don't pray to God's name. Be real. He wants you to be real. He wants me to be real. The body is not all that there is. Inside of us is a soul that is valuable and inside of us that soul will last forever. I pray, we pray, people have been praying for you that you would find the truth, that you would know God, you would know how to live,
you would know what is the truth and that you could be set free, that you could be set free from sin, you could be set free from strongholds, that you could live a new life. Please turn to God with all of all.
or unclean in your ways, He still loves you enough to suffer pain and die for you. How many people here would die for someone else? I would. I would die for each and every one of you. Even one death for each soul. Why? Because I also, as God loves you, I love you too. I do not judge you because everyone is different, from different backgrounds, different cultures, are raised differently. And they're both different actually. Can't hold someone's past against them. Everyone has a future. Actually, the future is always up to you. You can be anyone you want to. There's a scripture I'd like to mention that says, do you not know that with the faith of a mustard seed you can move a mountain? Faith is not believe God will do it for you. Faith is the belief that it's possible. If you believe it's possible and you strive and use your full effort towards a goal, it is always possible. You can move a mountain. All you got to do is get enough dynamite and people to carry the fucking stones to the middle of the ocean. Faith of a mustard seed you can move a these people are highly respected among me. Why? Because they are servicemen, just as you respect your armed forces, they are soldiers in the battle, and spiritual principles, like a good and evil. And also deserve your respect. I guess I should have been sorry. Oh, yeah. Aaron. Always know God is much less worried about what you do and more about how you treat others and how you think. Oh, let's see. 